So this is a story about Monica. So it was early days. We were cutting our teeth in enumerations. So we built a local team of enumerators. And one of the team members was a really strong activist lady from a settlement called Gidarani in Nairobi. She, she had really fought for land. She was elderly. She, she was probably in her 60s. And she could be quite cantankerous, even in normal interactions. But she was a member of the team. But she couldn't read or write. So what she did in the team is that she carried all the materials. She carried the pencils, the wrappers, the sharpeners, and the forms. And she had, it was great to have her because if an enumerator got a pencil, she would remember. Mm. And you'd not get another one until it was sh sharpened uh, to the end. Mm. Everything until you finished. <laughs> yes. And at the end of the day, she collected all the materials. So she was an asset to the team. And then we got invited for an exchange visit to South Africa. There was an enumeration happening in a place called Katlehom, near Joburg. And it was proposed that I go, and I go with Monica, and another young man, the team called Chalo from Korogocho. And, and so we prepared, and the day came, and we went to the airport, and we got onto a plane. I knew it was the first time for Chalo or Monica to fly. It was a British Airways plane. And they put us all on three seats together. Uh, but they put Monica at the aisle seat, on the aisle seat, and me at the center, and Chalo at the window seat. Uh, we should have changed it ourselves. But I didn't know that Monica would be so scared of flying. And so the plane taxied and started taking off. <laughs> You know, the angle where it is uh, gaining height. Mm. I'm not sure how she removed her seatbelt. But all of a sudden, she was screaming. She didn't have her seatbelt. She got up. She started running. Then she was falling. The whole plane was laughing. <laughs> she, she was so scared. Uh, <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's not true, it's a joke. <laughs> oh, it sorry. isn't a joke. <laughs> oh, oh. Sorry, Jan. Yeah, so uh, I had to remove my seatbelt and, and go for her. One of the cabin crew was helping me and laughing as well with, with everyone else. So we got, her back, we got her back to the seat and put her in the, in the middle seat. Um, I don't think I get embarrassed after that mm. in, in, any, in any situation. Mm. And then as, as we flew, she got a bit more comfortable and, and chatty. And after meals were served, she, she asked me, so this cutlery is plastic and the plates are plastic. So what happens when when a plane lands, do they wash them? And, and I said, no, they just throw them away. So she was excited and asked me, so could they give them to me? Mm -hmm. and, and I said, yeah, you, you can ask. We can try ask. And, and um, when the plane landed, we, we asked the cabin crew whether we could have the big bags where they empty all the, uh, all the used cutlery. Of course, they had a good laugh mm -hmm. and, and, and said, yeah, go ahead, just go ahead. And, and for good measure, they said, would you also like the old newspapers? And, and she said, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so we left the plane 
each of us, I think, with, with six bags, each, each of us with, <laughs> with, with two bags and stacks of newspaper under our arms. So, so we started driving towards um, Cutley Home. Uh, and then as, as we drove, at some point, we're going past a police station and um, when Monica says, stop, stop. And so the, the driver stops, and then she gets out of the car. So we all get out of the car and then she looks across and there's a police station and then she, she she asked the driver, this is the place, this is the, the place where they killed Steve Biko. When we got back into the car, I asked Monica, how, how did you, it's your first time in South Africa, how did you pick a random police station? And she said in 1973, when he was killed, I saw it in a newspaper and I cut it out. I, she couldn't read, so I cut out the picture and I've kept it. And it is the same place. And for me, I, I, I understood that her struggle for life was a much deeper, a much deeper struggle. She was illiterate, but her struggle was connected with many things. It was a very deep, deep, deep struggle. Um, a lot of respect. Not, not many people connect their struggles in, in that particular way. And so we, 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 got, we got the place, the settlement where we are going to do the enumeration. And they didn't put us up in a hotel. They put us up in upgraded houses. So slum families whose houses had been upgraded. And the first house that we, we went to, as we put down our things, uh, Chalo started talking to the daughter in the house, young pretty girl, and they decided to take a walk. It was early evening and they just went. Mm. And First, it was a bit uncomfortable. We had introductions. Then we sat in the sitting room. I think the mom in the house was cooking, the dad. We tried some small talk, but he, he was a bit worried. So he asked, so this young man you, you came with, you, you know him very well? I said, yeah, he's in the Federation. Then he let it go. Then after some time, uh, he got a bit agitated. He, he said something like, is it normal in, in Kenya for you people to do this? Mm. Then he, he was getting very agitated. And even I was getting agitated. Chalo has not been anywhere out of Kenya and he's gone off with someone's daughter. And, and at nine, they strolled in. So the next day, uh, after breakfast, when the SDA car came to pick us, we were asked to leave with our bags. They were very nice. They said, we'll take you to another house. So we went for the enumeration and then eventually we ended up in the other house with our bags and our bags of uh, uh, cutlery and garbage. So that, that evening, uh, Monica washed all the cutlery and she, she arranged it very well and asked for a little box and it fitted in the box and then we tied the newspaper so she had a little bundle. The six bags had condensed. Some people had not eaten their peanuts so she kept those aside. Then, and it's, it's very regular in, in Kenya that, that the older people, not the older people, a lot of Kenyans take herbal supplements or medicines. And, and normally they're, they're in very raw form. So, so you just get a stem of something or some leaves. 
and you boil them or you crush them and then you eat them. But it's different in South Africa. So, so Monica had, had some humble things. So she asked for a pan and then she, she started cooking roots and stems. And I was in the sitting room and then the mom in the house was screaming and, and saying, we are bewitching our house and, <laughs> and, and there were neighbors and Kamute and some brave lad from the settlement came and grabbed the pan uh, in a blanket and then ran off with it and <laughs> threw it somewhere. It was so dramatic. And, and of course, then the next morning, when they came to pick us, <laughs> they told us to, <laughs> to, to go, to go with, with our bags. But that was part of how we learned enumerations. We still learned a bit about <laughs> enumerations. When we go back home, um, Charlo decided that he can't go back to his settlement, Korogocho. Because if you come from a foreign country, uh, that night your house will get broken into. Because you must have come with good things. So someone will come and take those good things. So, so Chalo went to stay with Monica. Mm. Until Monica kicked him out one week later. Mm -hmm. But she she was brilliant. Yeah. She 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 was a real asset. Her. 